17. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. We are only 17 Patreon members away from our next major milestone. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a jackhammer chatterbait, you all get to help keep the show alive and well. All Patreon members will receive 20% off their orders to shallow water fishing tackle, 5% off all their orders to Jake's bait and tackle, 10% off their orders to tiger crankbaits, 10% off to Catoctin Creek rods. You'll gain access to our members only private Facebook group, members only content, and of course, our weekly and monthly giveaways. Again, we are only 17 members, 17 members away from hitting another major milestone. Thank you all so much. If it wasn't for you, this channel couldn't keep going. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and this is a guest I met back at at Augusta County Fishing Expo way back in like April, uh, April, huh, in January and February. And it's always, I have a to-do list a mile long of all the individuals I want to get on the show, and I'm I'm trying to go without sleep. It's it's almost working not being a human being at this point. Uh, Ty Bass and the Furious, dude. Um, I love what you do on all of your platforms. I'm really, really excited to have you on the show today. I'm I'm excited to be here. I've I've been watching and tuning in for a while now. I don't know exactly when you started, but I've been watching and tuning in for a while. You got the recaps, the you you cover the bodies of water I'm going to. I, I'm literally I'm, I've been paying attention, man. So to actually be here on here talking to you, I'm I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm looking forward to it. So appreciate appreciate uh, the opportunity. Honestly, let's begin by how did you get into this tournament fishing? And content creation, they they both kind of um, the content creation I believe started before the tournament fishing. I got I started fishing in general. I believe it was like 2015 or so. I started back. I started fishing ever in life. That's my first time ever fishing was like 2015. Um, at that point, and I I may have mentioned this, but I, at that point I decided to start a YouTube because you hear about people doing the YouTube the same thing, the same the third. I started that 2015, and one of my very first videos, what I decided to do was uh, challenge Scott Martin to a fishing competition. I mean, dude, I had literally, I don't know if I had caught a bass at this point, but I just started on YouTube and I, I was watching the Scott Martin fishing challenge. And I was like, Scott Martin, me and my kid, we can take you on. Uh, we're probably gonna win. Like I literally, that's how I jumped. That's how I jumped right in. I was like, let me just dive right to the top. Let me go straight on the head. Now, clearly I was about to, you know, embark on something that I was probably not gonna go well for me and my kid, but we would have had a good time, would have been fun. And to be honest with you, Scott has never hit me back. I'm I'm a little surprised. But I need to maybe I need to do a follow up. But um, that's kind of when I started my um, fishing, my YouTube side of it, my creation content creation side of it. Tournament fishing came very quickly uh, thereafter. Um, I really just I mean I, I think I caught like my, my first bass or so, and I was like, I think I can do. I think I can. I think I want to do this a little bit more often. So the place I worked at had a uh, tournament um, that they invited. Uh, at that time, I think it was Bassmaster or Major, or Major League Fishing pros, two of them to come down to our job and they would fish with us. I didn't have hmm. like, during the tournament. I didn't have a boat. I didn't have anything, but I signed up for it. I was like, let's go. And they were like, you don't have a boat. Um, OK, that's fine. You get to fish with David Walker. And I was like that. Oh, dude. OK, so I'm like I something about that just didn't seem right. I didn't have a boat, but I got to go fish with the, the, the pro. Mike McClellan came down. David Walker came down. Uh, I think James Nigamar came down year two, but um, they provided that opportunity. So my very first bass fishing tournament was with David Walker on the Potomac River, just absolutely tearing him up. He would have won the tournament, but obviously he was a pro. They didn't count his weight, but if you just look at weight versus that type of thing. But um, that was my first experience in the tournament fishing that day. And from that point on, it was like, yeah, we, we this is definitely something I need to be a part of because <laughs> I got to see it. I, I never saw like amateur level like bfl like you know grandpa took me i never did any of that i literally just straight to tournament 70 miles an hour down the potomac river watching him set the hook using the bait caster he gave me a hard he gave me a little bit of a hard time because i was using my my ten dollar walmart pole that i just i just got into bass fishing i had ten dollar two-piece walmart pole 
that I kept trying to throw a frog on with like 10 pound test line on the river. And needless to say, I wasn't really catching anything. I don't know if I caught anything that hold. Well, I, did, I caught one fish that day when uh, David Walker tied on the bait and tied on my line and tied the knot for me and told me exactly where to cast. That's when I caught my first fish that day. Other than that, I was struggling the whole day. So that's kind of how I got into that. Um, if you mix it all together, you end up with the Bass and the Furies. That came from a brainstorming session with my buddies at work. We decided to try to put something together for my name so I could start to create a, a brand and different things and kind of grow my my whole uh, thing. That you When did that start? Uh, that was, I was definitely tournament fits like 2016, 2017, somewhere around there. I want to say it's so kind of it. three years after you dabbled on YouTube, you started to get, take it more seriously, so to speak. That, that side of it. Yes. And the YouTube side of it. So just to, just to put it all, put it all to, cause my, my first name on my first YouTube channel was Ty's Fish and Adventure. So I really oh, cool. thought I was going to go Ty's Fish and Adventure. I thought I was going to chronicle my adventures as I go fishing because I go I go fishing no matter what right so I'll I'll go to church in a suit I get out of church in a suit I go right to the pond to go fishing that usually leads to me sliding down the hill because I'm not wearing the right type of stuff so that that's kind of where I figured my channel would go with me I've slipped in the pond by my house I, I fell off the front of my boat into the pond in my house I slipped I went fishing on a lunch break at work and I had like uh, salmon color pants I got my whopper plopper stuck. I had to walk through the mud to go get my whopper plopper up. So I had to go back into work with salmon colored pants covered in mud. And my boss asked me, hey, what you been up to? Well, I was fishing. Why were you late? Because I was fishing and my bait got, I don't really know how to explain that to my boss. But that's, that's, so I, that's kind of where I thought my channel was going to go at first was my fishing adventures. And then when I shifted over to the Bass and Fears, then it was let's make the Instagram, let's make the Facebook, let's make the YouTube, let's lock in and then let's try to see how we can grow this whole so i had my t-shirts my embroidery shirt. I, I tried to do my whole thing off the break that's kind of where i went to but i i started with a whole different um whole different direction when i first got into it interesting yeah no that's so fascinating because that's really mindful too most people i don't think would stick with the youtube channel let alone have the savvy to be like i need to rebrand and i need to do like I, I can't think of a better word of take it seriously, but it's it, I'm going to treat it more like a job, if that makes sense. Right, right. And, and and the fact that you're doing this in parallel with getting into tournament fishing and and I apologize, I forgot to ask this, but what what area of the DMV area do you do you call home? Uh, so I'm in the Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania. Uh, okay, that, tidal water that, country. That tidal, yeah, that, that's where I'm at. That's exactly exactly where I'm at. Is that that spot right there? Yeah. As since you really got started with fishing in like 2015, and then you got into really co angling and stuff like that, and this will be a two part question. Like part part one is when did you start feeling not like you could dominate on tidal river, but like you had confidence in your abilities. And then the second part would be when did you start thinking about getting to the front of the boat eventually, or did you ever have that thought about when I'd want to be on the front of the boat? Um. So okay, I'll go with the 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 first one um the tidal river confidence did not come until very recently i'll be honest with you that did not come till very recently um i i got a boat in 2016 so after i fished with david walker for two years as a co-angler i was like i'm buying a boat so in 2016 <laughs> i bought a brand new boat and i bought a truck because basically i was like let's let's do this right like here i am i i see how good it is let's do this but i got a i got a smaller boat i got a tracker uh, PT P one sixty. Nice. So I had a forty horsepower mo uh, four stroke, which is great. I didn't, never burned gas at all. Um, and I, I mean, I could go anywhere I want. I had a live. I competed as a boater from twenty sixteen to twenty twenty two. I fished a ton of tournaments as a boater. I would probably say is about fifty fifty as a boater versus co angler. So I do all the BFLs as a co for two diff two divisions. I do Toyota Series as a co. I do Bassmaster as a co. And then I hop in whatever local derby I can get in as a boater. So that's kind of what was my my one two deal to help me gain that confidence because what I've always felt like since I've started fishing is the learning curve. So the people I'm competing against on the bodies of water I'm competing against, they've been doing it for 30 years. I don't know what they know when it comes to the winds blowing out the east, the winds the versus the tide is coming this way. They know we need to go here. I have no idea. I, I'm mm -hmm. like at that point I had no clue. I'm like, I go to my same spot. I'm not getting any bites. 
Now I'm scrambling. I figure something out by the end of the day, but it's not enough to get me paid. It's not enough to even get me in the mention. Matter of fact, they, they have people don't even know I was there. Um, as a boater, I've had some scary things happen when I first got into the boat, trying to fish the mouth of this area versus this area. I ended up one tournament, let's put it this way. One tournament, I got towed back in to the boat ramp. My boat and me got towed back into the boat ramp. I still managed to weigh in though. That was crazy. I had a limit and everything. I still managed to weigh in, but I've had some, you know, some things, some learning things for myself um, as a boater, which we've all gone through. And I, I love to talk to people about that because I feel like if I had, you know, one, two people to mention a couple things. Once that happened, a lot more people did start talking to me. Hey, Ty, if the wind's going this way, maybe run over here to this creek instead. Because most of the time, it's you're so competitive, you ain't really trying to talk to nobody about shoulda, coulda, maybe, maybe type of thing because you're so competitive. You always think they're trying to take your stuff or go here and do that versus it's a small craft advisory. Maybe we all go to this creek and just all get back home safely uh, type of thing. But I get it. It's competitive. I'm just as competitive as the next guy. I've always been that way since I was eight six seven years old as soon as i could dribble a basketball i've been competitive so i understand it and i want to do my my best but um the boater side i think that was the first part of it was the the boat um moving from the code to the boat it's a confidence thing isn't it because you have to make the decisions now it's a you're the captain i do i do so (laughs) that that i really like that as a boater that's why i would enjoy myself during the week as a boater pitching at the certain spots and looking at this and this and then as a co is just like all right i'm gonna just pick my spots there's a lot of things I learned as a co. A lot of tips I picked up from people while fishing, while competing. That's always been my biggest thing. I get fishing the BFLs. I get learning. I get all that. But I feel like I can learn and compete at the same time. Like that's one of my biggest things. I'm not there just to take a notepad and write down some things. Because to be honest with you, there's some people I fish with. Um, you know, it is what it is. They're they're there. I'm happy they tried it. But I'm sorry. Like I told you before, when you fish with David Walker one week, when you fish with Mike McClellan next week, when you fish with Mike Iconelli one week, when you fish with Tom Reddington, when you fish with Gray Buck, when you fish with all these dudes, it's hard to get in the boat with a guy that can't hit a target. You know what I mean? I'm just being honest with you. That's very well, difficult. That's a good question for the kids that are listening at home. How am I going to word this? Are all co-angling opportunities equal? Like, like you just said, if you had the chance to be a co-angler at a Costa or an Open... Is that more valuable in your opinion than a BFL or an ABA? It's going to, it's going to depend on, it's going to depend on who who you, I think if I understand you correctly, I think it's going to depend on who you get as far as the benefits of okay. that event. So let's say I fish the opens. I get, you get Iconelli one day, the next day you get some guy you never heard of from some town that you never heard of fishing your home body of water, but he don't, this ain't where he's from. He be, he's basically doing, let's say he's doing the opens and he's he's trying to survive, basically. He wants to finish these in the points to get to the next point. When he comes to an out-of-town fishery, I'm sure he wants to do good, but he's also just trying to survive. He just wants to get through here, not not crash and burn, as they say a couple podcasts I've listened to. You don't you don't want to, you know, uh, you don't want to tank at one of these because it's really hard to make your numbers even out and get a top nine. So that guy. Am I going to learn a lot from that guy? He threw a chatterbait down the bank. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm yeah. not like he put his boat in the water. You know, <laughs> all right. Like I'm not really picking up a ton of stuff from this guy versus picking somebody that's fishes the body of water that I fish all the time. I get to see what little bait, what little trick they do, and little thing like that. Those little pieces. Now those are like because I fished the um, Toyota series and I drew. Adrian Avina on day two, and he was either leading or in second place. And we're on the Potomac River. I fish the river all the time. I plan on fishing the river forever. And now I got Avina who's lead who's leading the tournament as my boater. Okay, of course I'm paying attention. I'm locked in now because where he's running, these are things that I these are things that are going to help me throughout the course of my career. Do I care where he's fishing? Do I care where his spot is? Do I care about none of that stuff matters to me? I just need to know. I, I tell him all the time. I'm looking at your approach. As a co-angler, I'm looking at your approach. I want to know your thought process when you get – and this is the bigger tournaments. When I'm in a BFL, I don't care what that guy's thinking about. I'm just being honest with you. Sorry, BFL boater. If you're listening, I'm sorry. I don't care what you're thinking about. It doesn't matter to me at all. I ha- I'm fishing my own tournament versus all the co-anglers. I'm not worried about what my boater – none of that matters. I have to compete against these dudes over here. That's that's how I look at it. It's me – honestly, it's me versus the fish, to be honest with you. I need to figure out the fish. I'm really not worried about – Anything else anybody else has going on, I'm locked in on what I got to do. Um, 
and that's it. That's that's just how my mind always works. So I'm not worried about it. But in the in the other ones, in the bigger ones, I am. I'm looking at their approach because when you're with, when you're fishing with somebody who's doing it at the level that you want to be doing it at, again, a pro, uh, an Avena, a guy that's on the Bass Pro Tour, when you, like Iconelli, I'm, I'm paying attention to what he's doing, the speed in which he's fishing. I'm paying attention to these things because he's doing it at the level that all of us aspire to get to. So to get from where I'm at to where he's at, this is what he did. I got to pay attention to that. I need I need to pay attention to what's going on. Because he, I can only fish exponentially faster than any person I've ever fished with in my life at, at all and was accurate. Any side of the boat he pitched his bait on, accurate, hit any target he needed to hit. And I'm like, if that's what it takes to be where I want to get to, it literally changed the way that I changed the way that I fished. I had that same experience with David Walker because he's doing the same thing. I just didn't know what I was looking for when I was fishing with David Walker. I had no idea. I'd never seen tournament fishing at all. So I had no idea what to what to look for what to key in or pay attention to hopefully that makes sense hopefully it didn't sit, sit not sit well with a bunch of people but it, it yeah, that's just that's just how my mind works it's the internet buddy it's like it is what it is um, <laughs> I really don't care, i'm just i'm just i'm trying to be i'm trying to be nice i'm trying to be polite i saw that you and um i think ryan ingles shout out to ryan uh fished the team potemic teams and top 12 buddy and they absolutely freaking smoked them 23 pounds to win do you think it's harder to win a Potomac teams compared to a BFL. <laughs> oh, it's funny that you say that. Cause we actually, we, we actually talked about that on, on the day of the tournament, me and Ryan. That's funny. Um, yeah. Ryan, Ryan's a good dude. Shouts out to Ryan. Man. I always have fun when I fish with him. I met him fishing a BFL earlier when we had a phenomenal day. I got a top 10, my highest weight ever in a BFL came with fishing with Ryan Ingalls and it did, I barely cracked the top 10 on the river that day. I think I had 16 plus out of the back of the boat or 15 out of the back of the boat. And the very first guy that came into the ramp had 17 as a co-angler. I was like, I thought I had a chance at winning. I had 15 plus. I'm like, dude, I got a chance. No, he, I, I took 10th, but I had a blast just with Ryan. Um, the Potomac teams trail is by far like those guys are the best sticks on, on the river. If you can win one of those, one of those deals, you are, and because honestly, the I think the uh, payout is one of the best, if not the best for the local trail, the payout and the guys. I mean, you're I looked around and I saw like three guys that guide on the river as they're live. That's what they do for a living are in the Potomac team trail. You got all the sticks that have been fishing it for 30, 30, 40 years or whatever. It's an extremely tough trail. I've been fishing it since since I got my boat in 2016. The very first trail I tried to fish was Potomac teams. I literally jumped right into the Potomac teams because I wanted to fish it on the river. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely, my 14 and 15 got me, got me 67th place out of there. Like it's, it's tough. It is. It, those dudes are good, man. I, my, my hat's off to them. They are, they are really good. Really, really it, good. I feel like that's a pro and con. And I guess the reason I say that is, you know, as a kid that fished high school tournaments uh, and, and really fished any local tournament I could get in on the Potomac, I always thought like, okay, I suck because I could never finish in the top 10 at those things. And then I went to college and fished the college series. And when they would go to the tidal water, I'd start smoking them. And then I realized like, oh, it was because I was going up against 50 year old men that have fished this place nonstop. And I realized like, there's a positive and a negative to that. Uh, and it'll I think mess, it'll mess with you. It'll because I definitely yeah. thought I was doing something. I thought I was doing pretty good. I, I'm out there. I feel pretty confident. Like I said, I'm, like you mentioned before, you're about building that river confidence. Um, it. I definitely thought I. And then you get there and you're like, man, what is this? Is this is tough? This is I can't. I think I maybe got a top twenty once. I fished with another guy who's on um YouTube. I don't know if you guys know him. He's called his name is Your Next Cast. Me and him used to work together, and we fished. I fished with Tommy Teams Trail with him. Me and him fished it. And we were learning, um, we were learning how to how to get out there and do stuff on the rivers. So it was um, it was it was a great experience. Created lots of great videos and content, and I just got to run around a little bit. And I used that same knowledge to then go out and fish a different tournament. And I did really well. And you're networking, you're meeting people, that kind of thing. So I enjoy it. But yeah, it definitely you get you get to the BFL, and some of those guys when they sign up, you always see them in the top five. If they fish with so many teams, you always see them top five, top ten, unless something crazy happened. Um, but you you have a better chance of getting a top ten to BFL than you do in the uh, Potomac teams. I, I think I agree with you there. I think oh the other one I, I know what you said the river confidence the reason why I said it came late late later for me I'm talking like 
what are we in 2024 maybe yeah. 2020 2021 somewhere around there i started getting and i've been fishing it for you know four or five years but just it's, it's just that that like those the, a lot of those guys out there i've fished around a lot of them too they've seen me catching fish i've seen them catch a fish they it's 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 almost um some of the simple stuff like getting in a grass flat and sitting there or just yeah. like circling around it that little stuff i had to pick up on because i'm always thinking that you need to be you need you need you need to move sometimes on the river you don't need to don't touch anything on your boat just literally just powerful sit and cast all around where you're at you don't and i've seen dudes lose tournaments because they feel like they gotta man we gotta run over here and check these dots gotta run over here and do this and the moment you do that somebody slides right where you just were sitting at they top five you shoulda coulda woulda and if you had just stayed i know it started you weren't getting bites every 45 30 45 minutes but if you just stayed i mean eat a sandwich eat a, eat a take a break do something but keep, don't give up that spot when you move somebody's gonna slide and you're not gonna do well and you're gonna under you're gonna be upset when you see who who cashes a check at the end of the day when he when he was right beside you in athletics, I think there's a bell curve on certain techniques or, or qualities of an athlete. Uh, the example I give is if you're a pitcher and you think your curveball is your best pitch, working on your curveball 30% more doesn't help. At that point, you should work on your changeup, work on your fastball. Just working on your curveball when it's your best pitch habitually doesn't necessarily no longer make you a good athlete. If you, if you have dreams of like maybe cracking it as a professional do you feel like there's a bell curve with the title potomac like maybe i should stop fishing the title potomac as much and work on lake anna or, or clear deeper water just to kind of round out your game i think and um i actually do talk to a couple of my friends about this because you really i think when it comes to fishing and i think that's where a lot of people get lost is that you do have to understand what you're and i didn't at first that's why i'm saying it um you have to understand what your end game is so if your end game is to be and this is my end game is to be the best i can be on potomac kerr and maybe sprinkling sml and anna that's my bet that's my plan for myself i don't really the reason why i haven't tried the reason why nobody's seen the reason why you haven't heard why is ty not in the bassmaster thing yet ty has no desire to be in the bassmasters i don't i don't have any desire to be in the bpt i have none whatsoever right now i have four kids i have a family i have a whole deal i don't want to be gone week after week after week Go going to work is one thing being in Minnesota or New York for eight weeks at a time and then coming back. And then my son's a senior in high school. He's varsity uh, captain. His team is uh, darn near undefeated. He's having a heck of a year. If I'm missing every game because I'm over here, I have no desire to do that. So uh, my goal is to be the best I can on these like four fisheries. So my end game, I need to be well-rounded, deep, clear water and the river. But I feel like within what you're saying, just to keep going, I need to be good on the river tidal grass, but I also need to be good in the wood. I need to be good on the rocks on that as well. Like the same skill set that I need that I use on every body of water, I need to make sure that I can and have the spots and I have the the wherewithal and the, the tackle and, and preparation, all that stuff for all, all of them. So that's why for me, what I do all season and people, uh, they, you know, they want to give me heart, man, you just be fishing ponds, man. You be fishing ponds. You just, you out there, you holding up big old fish at a pond. It's you be. It blows me away that the fact that people want to throw shade at people who pond fish and count like that. What I and I try to explain it myself. When I pond fish, I have a pond that I go to that's similar to the Potomac, and I do it to practice. Like what you're saying, I get well rounded with grass fishing by going to a grass fishing pond. When I want to go deep clear, I go to this pond that I know this like ten to twenty feet deep. And I throw my deep diving crankbaits and I look for what I can find. I try to run in the brush pile to see how I can come through. And to your point of being a well-rounded individual, I feel like that is a key for me. That's part of the reason why I started throwing a drop shot at first. I didn't even know how to rig a Texas rig when I first got into this. I had no idea. I just hammered the drop shot, shaky head, drop shot, shaky head. I had to flip back around to throw a chatterbait to learn how to do a chatterbait and a crankbait and searching and stuff. I was so used to holding my rod still straight dead stick and just wait until I just waiting 20, 30, 40 minutes, to, you know, to get one bite. That's just, how, that's how I learned. So adding the power side of fishing was a whole thing for me. So well-rounded is, is what, when you pick up a drop shot, you ain't saying nothing, pick up something else. Even matter of fact, today, 
this whole week, I've been going out and I just throw a frog. I'm not a frog fisherman. I honestly, I, it's not even my favorite bait to throw. I know people love frogs. You might, I might be offending people, but I don't like, throw, I didn't like throwing a frog. So what do I do? I take a frog out. Every single day I can go fishing, I take a frog out. I'm going to become better with a frog. And that's it. I caught a frog fish before I came and talked to you. I, I'm, I'm going to throw a frog until I get the frog down. That's just me becoming well-rounded because it's going to come into play at some point. It, it, it really does. And I think, and that's something that I've always battled with is I, I don't want to become so good at the Potomac at the expense of everything else. And I, and I really, and it sounds so weird, but I've just known so many friends that are river rats. And, and, and I don't say that in a negative way. If you're listening, it, it's, you guys will always take my money, but I know if I pull you on Lake Anna, you, oh, no. your butt's going to pucker a little. And <laughs> and I, I I don't know. It's like I'd rather bat for a strong average everywhere than hit a home run one place. And I, I don't know. It's But it's so hard because all the tournaments are on the Potomac, like all the big money right now. It's the Potomac. You could go to Kerr. Um, but the one thing, since we're on the subject, I think it's a, it's a nice little parallel here is I, I, well, by the time this uploads, this is already uploaded. I just uh, interviewed Jonathan Crossland, who won the Piedmont at Kerr. And okay. He's from South Carolina. He's yeah, one Lake Murray. And he talks about the cult. And this is something I've really seen. There's a cultural difference in the Carolinas that, hey, we have 200 waypoints. We're hitting them. And you're just going to go boom, 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 brush pile, brush pile, go. And some of these guys will come up to the Potomac and they almost get the nervous shakes where you're like, yeah, you got to like power pull down and sit here for eight hours. And they're like, oh, we can't do that. Mm-hmm. It, is it a cultural thing that it is like tidal versus like lakes that run and gun versus that sit? And and how hard is it to learn that cultural difference? I, I think it is. And Crossland, very good, very good guy. I, I met him. Um, he's really, really good dude. I, I enjoy uh, fishing with him and talking to him. I, he, he he came and clutched for me last season. I really appreciate Jonathan. So, um, but it, it is, um, you can tell like if you get a late guy and he comes to the river and he tell because he wants to, yeah, he wants to pick him up and put him down. And I, I get chasing the tide. I mean, I've done all that. It, it's, it, it is what it is, man. I, I prefer personally, I almost every, I think, is it every trophy? Every trophy I've got from the river on my wall from the BFLs has came by staying in the same. Matter of fact, both of those trophies came within 100 yards of each other. We were fishing the same stretch on the Potomac. If you put me in this stretch on the Potomac, I'm getting one of these up here because I it's 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 so good it's such good fishing but we sat there for seven and a half we might have picked up and ran, started the motor and ran over to one little area and was like nah that's not come right back you hop on the lake man you're waypoint waypoint point point rock steep tapering point rock point rock point especially especially a place like her you are you are on the you're on the move it does it does take a little bit to run but me I love I absolutely love Kerr. But here's the thing. When I did win at Kerr on the BFL, guess what we did? We stayed in the same area for the whole tournament. My boater was like, I got another spot we can try. And I looked at him. I'm like, why? Dude, I got a limit. Like, you got a limit. We are quite, why? And it was dirty water, just like the river. I'm literally just in the back of some deal. We stayed in there for seven and a half. And then we ran back to the ramp. That's when I did good. I've got checks on Smith Mountain Lake out of, as a boater myself because I fished the Big Bass Tour. So I've got to check out of that. I think three years I got it, and I caught my personal best on Smith Mountain Lake. I love fishing Smith Mountain Lake. I love the deep clear, but I know that I'm I'm cranking a, a brush pile at the end of a dock. I'm 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 getting a uh, channel swing bank. I'm doing that, but I, I like doing these different things. I, I like to mix it up, but there's a lot of guys that don't, and they're they're just gonna be river rats. And there's nothing wrong with being a river rat. I do I do enjoy a good river rat. Um, individual a lot of times because then I, I don't have to explain anything if I get in the boat with a river rat I don't have to explain anything we're, we're just going fishing he turns I know he's turned I know where we're going that we don't even we don't even got to talk we both know what we're there to do and we're just going to go fishing my the guy I fished with the one time we just he pulled up in a spot I cast he cast I hook up he hook up I hook up he hook up we're never in each other's way I'm casting on this side because I know there's fish over here he thinks all the fish are over here I'm jacking him over here. He starts casting over here. I start jacking him over here. It doesn't matter. He starts getting them over here. We're good. We're going to work together. We're going to get through this. We're going to keep catching them. And we're all, the goal on the river is everybody get a check and don't burn up a bunch of gas. Do you have one win that sticks out in your mind that really solidified to you that you can do this? I feel like we all have that one win that like you no longer think you suck all the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, I definitely didn't think that for a minute because I just I couldn't never put it together. I, I, I'm losing fish. I'm losing uh, just back and forth. Um, I for me, I want to I want to say Kerr. Um, I want to say Kerr, but Kerr was just me throwing a spinnerbait and catching a bunch of bass. I think. It, it it was a very it was remarkable it was an amazing experience by Boulder amazing guy I really I really enjoyed that day but I think finally getting a trophy on the the river my home river I think that's the one that really says like is a super tournament too it was a two day tournament so I had to put it together over two days that to me and I think everybody around me was like okay I Ty Ty I mean I had already won the BFL so that's kind of when people start knew that I could put something together. But I think on the river, it's just something different about the honestly for me, winning like the Wednesday night tournament really kind of changed my thought process because I've been fishing that thing for six years and I couldn't I could never uh get a win in that. So I was excited about that. But I really I oh man, it's, that's a tough one. I gotta go back to Kerr. I gotta stick with Kerr. Kerr let me know I could do it. Kerr let me know I could put the bait in the right spot, I could get the fish in the boat, and I could lock in because I, I found myself throughout that day talking. To my to my to myself during that day, having a conversation of what I need to do to be successful. I'm I'm this close, dude. You got four fish. You got four fish. Just keep this bait in your hand. I have the hardest time just keeping the bait in my hand. Just I, I I'm looking for a one-two punch. That's my deal. I always go by when I'm fishing. I need a one-two punch. I need two baits that I know I can throw that I'm gonna get bites on. I only had one and my boater mm. had and I tried his and I couldn't get bit. He caught 20 fish. I was I, I had my four and I couldn't get no more. And he's just jacking. I was like, all right, let me switch baits real quick. The sun poked out a little bit. My sprinter bait bite went away. His bite picked up and he's lighting them up. He's catching them on top water, catching them on vibrating. He's lighting them up. And I can't, I'm determined to keep the sprinter bait because I'm getting the right quality. But then I, I just I, I I I and that just that let me know that I had in in me. In fishing, I've always had it for sports and basketball and stuff like that. But in fishing, it just let me know that I can lock in, I can grind, I can get to the end of this deal, I can put the pieces together, and then I get to the end um, and then have the ultimate result being the the win. So I, I ask it with Kurt. Was there a moment in that day that you actually let the thought in your brain pass and entertain that you might have won it? Absolutely not. At no point in that day that I thought I'd won that tournament. None whatsoever i i kid you not i was i thought i would get a check when i got four fish i was like I, and one was like a four pounder on current i was like this is a good this is a good fish that's I, a I look at the i'm looking at the results from last week it took like 10 pounds or something i'm like okay i know i was like i, I got at least a four a two and a two i'm like all right maybe eight and i got a little little guy here nine you know something like that i'm like okay and then my last one was a little bit better than the other one but at no point in that day that I think I had won that tournament because you know why uh, you, I don't know if you've interviewed him, you know, David Williams, I'm going to get, I'm going to give yes. him the props because he's, 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 I've literally put his kids through college, just like another guy, I put both their kids through college due to my donations to them. And every tournament I show up to, I donate to him. He, he got a new truck. Thanks to me. I'm sure he got a nice Phoenix bass boat. I'm pretty sure I paid for the majority of that. This man does nothing but take my money. Every time I go to the water, he's a very nice man, by the way, David Williams, shouts out to you, David Williams. He's a heck of an angler. Hats off to you, man. But um, I did not think I was going to beat this man on the river. And he weighed in before me, and he was sitting in first place. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is – I'm never going to get this deal. Even when they got to the last – and then the last guy in the parking lot, the last guy walking up, it's two guys. One has a sack, and I'm I'm leading at this point, and I'm even – we're at the end of the turn. I still didn't think I had. He's walking up. I look at his bag. I'm like, dude, he's got way more than 11 pounds. <laughs> oh, this is not good for me. He was the boater. Thank goodness. Then the next guy had like one fish. Then at that point, that's the only point that crept in my head that, okay, here you are. And my buddies are looking at me like, Ty, you won. I'm like, I'm still sitting there. I'm still not even, it's just not registering because you, it's one of those moments where you put, dude, I, I fish a lot. I'm just going to be rude for a second. I fish a lot. I fish a, a lot. And it sometimes is to a fault. I fish a lot. I put in a lot of work because I always think there's a curve and I'm trying to make up for lost time and trying to shorten the, and keep up with the amount of knowledge that I have relative to other people who've been fishing for so long. And I just, I never think that I've done enough to, to get to where it's even and, and you're always learning and you'll still always be learning. I think that's something I had to tell myself. You'll always be learning. So just 
that just 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 trust what you're doing trust that you're doing the right thing you're making the good decisions things like that and i don't know people are probably starting to see a little bit more this year i am a little bit more confident when i put my boat in the water that i'm gonna i'm gonna catch some fish i'm gonna have a good day whether i'm a win or not i don't know but i am a little bit more comfortable after this amount of time for fishing um uh, and that that I that I can do good when I put my boat in the water. If you take me to Smith Mile Lake right now, I, I'll I would 100% guarantee you I'm gonna catch a limit. Take me to Kerr, I'm guarantee you that I'm gonna catch a limit. That's just how I think now. It's a little bit different than when I first started. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a limit. Whether it's gonna win, I don't know, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a limit, and I'll I'll go from there. How big will a win out of the front of the boat? Let's say a BFL. What would that do for you, career wise, to to now have it from both sides? It's, it's, uh, I still get a lot of, um, I, I did, I did say I was going to go, I did say I was going to go Cat Williams on this interview. Okay. I still get a lot of, um, <laughs> I still get a lot of slack, a lot of flack from people that think I'm not any good because I only catch fish out of the back of the boat. And they keep telling me that it's, uh, I get good draws and I get a spot with them. I'm just catching my boaters fish and I'm just, I still get that stuff from, surprisingly a lot of people um why i don't know if they never thought i was a boater ever i mean i was a boater for six years i sold my boat that's the only reason i'm not a boater and thank god this year you know for everybody i got I, I was blessed to get a 19 foot ranger so i'll be right back in boater i got a 200 horsepower mercury i mean a 200 horsepower john spot i got a 19 foot ranger i'll be back as a boater very soon as soon as i get my boat checked out and cleaned up and get my stuff on there i'll be back but yeah i still do it's weird man why is there a stigmatism with or stigma not stigmatism i think that's for your eyes i'm sorry comment section um with co-angler versus boater because and i feel like it's been magnified nowadays because you hear in the comment sections of like bfl forums like oh there's no co-anglers because of forward facing sonar and it's like is that just a straw man because i feel like there's been arguments about co-anglers versus boaters forever it it is i you so you you got the guys who are um they're they're under the thought of you know, it's you're 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 just benefiting from someone else's hard hard work as a coach. That's how they look at it. The boater put in the time, he did the practice, he did the research, he's here, it's his boat, now you're here. And while all of those statements are one hundred percent true, if the boater does his homework, the boater shows up, he's prepared. Um six times out of ten, he didn't do that for his co angler. Right. Let's just be honest. He didn't he didn't find those fish. So his coke can catch fish. He found those fish so he can catch fish. Right. So his plan is to go in there that day and catch his own fish. Um, so as a co, you have a boater who's done his homework. He's ready. He's prepared. He knows where the spots are. He knows where he's going to fish. You now got to catch fish around a guy who's in an area that he's comfortable in. To me, you're you're putting in a lot of work. Co-anglers have to be prepared for a lot. I will never say that being that's tougher than the other thing. I try not to compare the two. I feel like they're in a whole different, it's two different, it's two whole different tournaments going on. Like it's doesn't make any sense, but it just, it, I, to be honest with you, I've never understood it. I've never understood why people feel, feel, feel the way that they feel so strongly. I get why they feel the way, why they feel so strongly and why they feel the need to downplay one accomplishment in order to make a point about the other side of it. That I've never understood. That's where I get, that's where you lose me at is by saying that, this guy's no good because he only benefited from that guy versus, Hey, that guy caught him. You can take a sorry angler to a spot. He ain't going to catch nothing. I don't care who his boater is. He still has to put his bait in. He still has to catch fish and he still got a land fish. I feel like that's a big thing um, with the four faces on argument. People say, when did landing fish not become something that we appreciate? You can find the fish. You still got to get the fish in the boat. You can see them swimming. You can set the hook. You can do all this. You still got that's they that one trail literally has that as a violation. You trying to land the fish properly. That is a skill set for bass fishing. Making the proper cast, landing the fish, whether you're using a net or no net, um, setting the hook, your proper hook setting technique. These are all skills that you have to have in order to be a successful angler. Um, I just I don't get I don't get the I don't get the um, I don't get it. But but that's not my job to get it. My job is to get out there and. I, I put it this way. I've caught fish and my boaters have caught fish. And if you ask, I think you can ask almost anybody that I fish with, if we were on them, I will tell every last one of them that I hope that we both have 
a great day. You from the front, me from the back. And my stick is always, we both need to be in the check line at the end of the day. You can be, hopefully you get second or third or first. I'll gladly take a 13th or 14th. I just want us both to have a good day. I'm trying to build a positive around me in fishing because what I learned very quickly is that uh, that one guy you get that doesn't it think your day doesn't go great. If you start a trail about him or a comment about him, he's going to be best friends with the boater you get next week. And your day will not go good from that week on. Um, when you run your mouth in the fishing industry, apparently when you, when you start talking, people start talking and everybody day does not go good. So I prefer everybody to do well. Let's all shake hands and go to kickback jacks and enjoy salmon and broccoli meal. it will be really interesting to see with this Renaissance and, uh, solo events. Cat has it, ABA has it. And then also kayaks where kayaking is blowing up, how much that changes and evolves the co-angler scene. Cause if you're a boater, you could pay and just, you know, example is for me is I'm, I'm, you know, I kind of haven't let this on the channel, uh, yet, but I'm getting some live streaming antennas to where I could live stream a tournament, but I can't do that with a co-angler. But if I did a solo event, I could put that in the back seat. I can have my iPad so I can look at comments. I, it would be really good for my clientele. Right. So I think there is stuff for people to where, yeah, maybe you do just want to do the solo. And then from a co-angler standpoint, it's like you will make so much more money and return on your investment by do kayak fishing. I'm sorry. It is so much more affordable <laughs> than a, a boat. I mean, right? <laughs> well, I, I agree 100%. And that's, I think you, you've you noticed uh, with me because I saw both of us were both climbing up the leaderboard yeah. at the same time in the last tournament that we were in. I was definitely paying attention because I was like, Thomas, Ty, Tom, Ty. I was like, okay, we're, we're going for it. I was excited. It was a good day. But um, I've noticed that myself. I like to, I, I decided to embark on the kayak fishing myself because I wanted one I didn't have a boat at the time and I made up in my mind for 2024 that I was going to get a kayak and join the kayak trail once I found out how cost effective it is one yeah. two the tournament entry fee itself and then you look at the payout you pay 50 get 70 boats you can win 1300 come on man that's, that's I, I'm, pretty I'm, damn good I'm gonna right? take that because honestly and I've, I've said it before I fished the BFL it's 113 to get in I won first place in the BFL I made 1900 so 100, I had to beat 127 or 133 people, and I made 1,900. That literally lasted me for, you know, like two months because then you had to go right back. You know what I'm saying? You're right back in. You got to pay the entry fee. You got to pay the regional. You got to pay the super tournament. That's 220 now. Like, so you're like doing that is not 220 will cover my whole kayak. Season. Plus, you can double or triple dip. Like, I think there was the, um, the Mid-Atlantic kayak was going out and the Chesapeake Bay kayak. In theory, you could enter all three tournaments the same day, and if you have the most inches, you'd win all three tournaments, and that's like three to four grand. Like that's I that's a hell. Thing. I had no idea that because they they were mentioning in the meetings, and I was like, yeah. put the code identifier for both, and I was like, I it, I didn't grasp I didn't grasp the concept. I didn't do it. I, I maybe maybe I should have, but I'm doing it now. I'm actually in two kayak three kayak tournaments right now. And I put all the identifiers on one board and I'm submitting everything for all of them. I'm trying to catch all of them. I didn't even know that. Like I didn't even, I didn't even know that was a thing. So that, that side of it too, that makes it kayak fishing is, I, I really, really enjoy it. I absolutely love the kayak fishing, kayak fishing community just as a whole. Everybody's out there, man. They, they, they want to, they want to see you doing good. They're willing to offer tip. They want to help out. They want to help out if they can. Even in the meetings, they were stressing the importance of if you see your buddy struggling, make sure you help them out. I've been mm -hmm. in practice where at the BFL, you'll be calling all your buddies and, and they ain't nobody trying to come get you because they fishing. They they not even trying to. I'll catch you after the tournament. Hey, can you stay right there? I had one guy. He literally I'm, I'm overhearing him, but I'm literally listening to him. His buddy tried to do some something crazy that he shouldn't have done. He tried to jump something in the tournament and he got stuck. So he's calling a guy that I'm listening to. And the guy's like, hey, well, where are you at? He's like, are, are, are you safe? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm, he's like, I'm safe. All right, well, uh, uh, my way ins at two thirty. So uh, once I get done, uh, I'll, I'll circle back. I'll check on you. I'll see how see how things are going. I was like, oh, damn, that's cold. Oh, that was cold. But he was on him. I could see him. He was catching him. He was like, I. He, he was like, you sure you're safe, right? I mean, he wanted he's gonna look out for his buddy, but he's like, you sure you're safe? You sure you sure you, everything's good? Yeah, I'm good. He's like, all right. He's like, so the dude called back again and was like. Hey, you, you sure you don't want to, um, you know, maybe I can, hey, 2.30 is the way, man. I'm going to catch you at 2.30. Well, 
we'll make sure like it's I'm 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 and I'm 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 joking, but I'm very serious. Like the kayak thing, it was stressed and poor, and they stress it in the BFLs. Don't get me wrong, they stress it, but yeah. again, sometimes you're paying seventeen hundred dollars to get there. I'm sorry, I'm 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 gonna have to fish out this tournament. I'm not throwing my seventeen hundred dollars down the drain for for you because you made a silly move. I'm going to fish my tournament. There's I'm, also wait. a level of safety with a boat compared to you're on a kayak. Yeah. on the damn title Potomac. Like, Boy. yeah. And yeah. I also appreciate that because I'm not going to lie. That was the first time I fished a kayak tournament or been in a kayak on the title. I was a little nervous. Oh, really? Um, okay. Me too. Same, same. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and that kind of gets into like the strategy here because this is what, talking to a boat guy, you're one of the few people I know that started in boats and went to kayak. I was the same way. What adjustments did you have to make? Because I mean, one for honest, like for me is, I have a pedal kayak, thank God, but I still had to take coffee and pre-workout just to get to my damn spot in Pohick before the thing started. I mean, did you like, um, like how, how far did you decide to go or was like, you know what, this is good enough because I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> so um, I, I like, uh, I like the, the kayak tournament from the standpoint of me. It allowed me to lock back in on doing my, my map studies and things that I like to do. I, I like to do them for the BFLs, but I've gotten so tired of doing my map study on the river. I'm prepared. I know where I want to go. I know where the fish are biting because I fish the Wednesday night tournament every week. We try out all parts of the river. I know where it's at. I'm now, um, and then I get to a boulder and he's, he says he, he has, he has, he doesn't care about any of the stuff that I didn't practice or worked on. And I, I very rarely, meant, I don't even mention it unless I'm asked. So I was excited to get back into just that part of it, just being back in control of my own decision. I had did my map study. I found an area that looked similar to an area that I've been fishing that I thought was going to be um, where the fish could stay, set, set up, move up, and then go back down. Something that had a little bit access to deeper water, but they could get really shallow, um, and that I felt like I could get a bait to. It wasn't grass topped out already. So when I did my research, I looked at it, and I found a launch that was public that I could go. And basically, to start my morning, I had a plan. I wanted to start in one spot on a dock on off a point that had like rock, and the grass and everything mixed in. I was like, maybe I'll start there because it's really close. Because like you said, I only have arms. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, I was like, I'm not going far. I just knew I knew that already. I knew I was not going anywhere. Pretty much out of my eyesight, like not more than a maybe a football field distance. I was not going that far. I, I haven't paddled okay. farther than that in a kayak before. And when I did, yeah, my my heart's everything's going be just because um just because uh it's not something I normally do. And I have in the past personally, I have back issues that I've had to see uh, physical therapy, things like that for neck issues, same thing, I have physical therapy, things like that for us. So I know me. Now, one thing my doctor did say is that I do need to row. So I use that as my reason to get out there and do the kayak. I'm like, this is doctor said I need to row. So I'm going to row. Um, I, it has helped. It helps. She said I need to strengthen the muscles to do better. So I found a little spot. I literally ran from that marina, you know, a few paddles and I shot to the dock first. I made forecast. I said, nope, this ain't it. I shot across. I was like, let me make the run. And I, I said, I'm mean, like, let me make the make run. run, <laughs> run. <laughs> here I go. <laughs> paddle, paddle, paddle. Um, I get over here. And so this is how bad I am. I have a graph. I bumped the graph with my knee. I cut it off. I don't even have a map. I just had it on uh, uh, depth. I just want to see depth because I don't use the graph at all when I'm on the river. I don't care about that, that thing at all. Uh, so I, I didn't have a map. I just used my eyes to see where I was going, obviously. Paddle. I missed my spot. So I paddled too far, which clearly is a, a gross negligence. That's completely, I used more arm muscles than I needed to. I made three cat, three or four casts and I'm like, my bait's hitting the ground too quickly. This cannot be what I'm trying to fish because I'm trying to fish in five feet. I want my kayak in five feet. I'm trying to fish up in two, one or two. So I looked over and I was like, oh, okay, that's where I'm supposed to be at. Then I was thinking there's going to be more tournaments. Luckily, I did all this really quickly. And like it took me maybe 10 minutes to paddle there. It took me like 23 to paddle back because I was exhausted um, at the end of the day. But it took me like 10 to get over. I finally found my spot. Then I set up and I stayed there for seven and a half hours. I never moved. Do you feel like there were any issues with adjusting your equipment to being out of a kayak versus a boat with hooks or anything like that? Example oh. is... Crankbait fishing. When I finally went over to a kayak, I got my ass kicked every time I lean into a fish. Like I don't know why I keep missing fish in the kayak. And a friend told me, he's like, "Well, your shit that you use on a boat is too soft because you're used to taking a step back 
and, and putting pressure. Okay. Well, if you try to do that in a kayak, you're going forward and you, yeah, okay. and you need to beef it up. And I, and I learned that. I was like, oh shit. So I have to adjust some of my stuff. Did you feel like there's anything that felt a little off your first kayak that you want to adjust equipment wise? 100%. Yes. Um, I think as we were saying, adjust it from the boat to the kayak. Yes. That's, yeah. that was huge for me. Um, making those adjustments, especially from being a boater or a co-angler. It was first time I set the hook on a jig fish in a kayak. I almost went out the kayak. I, because I tried to give them everything I had, like I normally do when I'm in the boat, when I can take that step, like you said. And I set the hook and my kayak went sideways and I went and I I don't think I landed the fish. I still think I missed him, but um, I did have to learn that. Now, what I did, the only benefit that I have of that, making the adjustment, it wasn't too bad for me. My hook sets, and you can ask anybody that knows about me, my hook sets are not uh, ferocious at, to begin with that anyone that knows me fishing they know i usually lean into I, I i lift up or i sweep to the side those are usually my two go-to because i fish crank baits and i fish a wacky rig i'm going straight up or i'm leaning to the side so when i switched to doing kayak fishing it wasn't that bad because i am still doing the, i'm skipping my senko which i found was actually pretty good because i sidearm skip so i sidearm skip that was fine i lean into and then when i'm crankbait i'm just sweeping so i noticed that i'm sweeping I've already changed my rod action because I know my hook sets are a little bit lighter than most to be um, beefier rods already. So like my, I, I, not not shorter, cause I'm short, I'm five, six. So I, I got shorter stuff, but my uh, power, sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. The power of my rods so that the rod does more of the, the work, the power of get, driving the hook in versus me doing driving the hook in. So like, um, that's how my stuff is already. So switching over, I literally, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys can see here. I've got, I think I got 42 rods right here in my living room. Um, <laughs> this, and then my whole tackles over here on the other side of the living room that we watch movies and then uh, all my tackle. So I have them right here. I didn't really have to change. I use the same stuff for both. I haven't changed anything at all. And I just, I just went out the kayak uh, earlier this week and I jacked them on a Texas rig. I mean, every single fish I caught came on a Texas rig. And I did, I did lose some with the, the hook set, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the hook set. It was more of the kayak. I was trying, I, I spend so much time because I don't have pedals. I'm adjusting. That's where I'm, that's where I'm struggling at. I, I spend, so I pull up on a spot, I make the pitch. And then as soon as I make the pitch, my kayak starts drifting this way. Cause I don't anchor down. I'm just, I'm pulling up to a spot real quick, trying to make a pitch. I don't, I, then when I go, when I straighten up, when I go to set the hook, I'm late. And I lost like two fish like that yesterday because I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get my hook set in, but that's more of a, um, that's more of just trying to get a, a different, like you said, with the pedals or something where I can at least just sit some, a lot of times when I'm setting the hook on a crankbait fish, I'm not even looking, I'm not even facing the fish when I set the hook because I cast this way, my kayak goes this way and I'm reeling this way, but then I feel the bite. Then I set the hook this way. Then as I fight the fish, the fish pulls me back to straighten out. Then I start setting up like that. It's just, that's what I'm having a hard time. I told my buddy, I spent more time correcting my position than I did making casts when I went fishing. It is so bad, man. I feel so terrible. I'm like, if you gave me, if I could have pulled up in the grass and at least just sat there for a second, I used my anchor, but I got, I still got, I still got blown around, man. It was, it was tough for me. That part of it was tough. I don't know if it was your first tournament. Uh, if it was, I mean, you hell of a job. Top 10 finish uh, against some really good MVKVA sticks. Um, that, a hell of a finish. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. It was my first tournament, first kayak tournament ever. I did a, uh, I did a fishing chaos, uh, like one of the month long tournaments that they do where you can fish anywhere. I did one of those. Um, but a single day, just eight hours in the kayak. That was my first time spending eight hours in the kayak, period. That was, it. That was my first wow. time going to tournament ever. And then, of course, I chose the river of all places to get blown around on on my very first day. But it was okay. I was glad the wind wasn't as bad. But I also picked a spot that I thought I could sit on the backside and I, the wind wouldn't bother me as bad. That was part of what I was trying to look look for. The one thing we haven't mentioned yet is is while you were doing so much, I mean, you are an insanely busy human. Um, I thought I was busy. I have nothing on you, whether it's co-angling, boating, kayaking, all this stuff. Your social media and your portfolio, how do you manage that when it comes to short? And this is going to, guys, some of you guys will like this shit. Some of you get, people won't because it's going to get super nerdy. How do you manage short form versus long form content, your editing procedure? Like, do you have like a pattern you've developed to stay 
consistent? Um, I, I do 100%. I struggled a lot early on making the videos cause I was just doing, um, long form, long form for like, you know, 2015, 2016, everything was long form. There was no, not, not a lot of people making the, the short, short stuff. So I do have, I have 100% have a system that I use. If I'm going to do the, the long form video, like where I'm doing my tournament day, if I'm doing like a fishing day and that's why people have not seen a lot of those lately, because that just, <clears throat> it, it can get and does get time. overwhelming and people just like Ty, I don't have time to edit eight hours. I know I don't either. That's why I have a system and my system is very key. I, uh, and it's very simple, but it's basically, uh, one button and I had to get the GoPro and it has the button, but it's just a highlight button. That's literally my deal. So if I film an eight hour tournament, whenever something happens, I hit the button. That way I'm not watching eight hours of film. If I'm talking, if I'm saying a key point highlight, if I catch a fish, Highlight. I know at least a minute before the highlight and probably a minute after the highlight, I'm going to have something that I want to use. So when I get home, I don't look at eight hours. I literally look where the red highlight marker is. I know those are the clips I want. I take those clips out. Every video I edit is in iMovie. So I don't use any different type of software. I do everything on my phone through iMovie. I have a MacBook. I have it all on there. I have a photo Adobe. I have all that stuff. For me, my system only works if I just do iMovie on my phone, edit short form. It's literally get it, edit it, either allow it to auto do, and then I tweak the auto if I can, or whatever idea I have in my head. I use the idea in my head, make a bunch of videos. Whenever I create content, I go through and I make a ton of videos. Save draft. I have a million drafts saved. Uh, draft save. Then when I, I know when I'm busy, because I, I sometimes I work 13, 15 hour days. Sometimes I work seven, eight hour days. Sometimes I work immediately come home. Got to go right to a, a sporting event with one kid, drop that kid off, sit at the event with the other kid, come back, pick the other kid up, come back home. I ain't got time to be editing no, no video. I don't have time. There's not no time. Maybe when I get to the event, if I'm sitting and I have service, I might edit something. But at that point, it's just a matter of go back through, grab draft, upload draft. I, I When I say draft, I do captions words choose the photo the uh cover photo i do all that at one time save as draft when it's time to upload hit share and i'm good to go so without it with uh sorry without a without a system like that my whole thing uh would would stop whether it be my my long form videos all the i have a bunch of those saved as drafts i just gotta i like to go through and edit those and do the highlights of promoting my other videos. I like to do my for, intro, outro, all that stuff. I like to do all that, but it's, um, I, I, I get in a, I get in a mood when I make a video, I start making a video. And then sometimes they, a lot of them lately just seem to turn into rants on my long form video. So I don't want Randy block it. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to just share rants all the time because it's like, I get to talking about something and then I get upset about, and then I'm like, man, I can't, believe this 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 and so a lot of my youtube videos i had a guy at the uh potomac teams tournament matter of fact he's like why after i won okay so this is after i won the potomac the the uh wednesday night with 23 pounds i won the wednesday nighter me and my buddy with 23 pounds then we came back me and ryan came back with big fish and the 12th place the dude looked at me and was like man why you stop posting videos because they know me they know i'm not posting potomac river videos during potomac river time i'm between april and october you will not see no potomac river videos out of me because i'm sorry i know how the river works everything you share someone will be in your spot when you get there so when you share if you won't be prepared to have some company i'm gonna just tell you that right now if you share i guarantee you if i could make my screen wide i'll show you somebody's watching your video scrolling out seeing the back, looking at that trip I know that tree. They'll be out there on Tuesday morning. They will fish it. And when you get back there on Saturday and wonder why there's nothing going on, it's been six, seven people there. That's just how it works, man. It is what it is. I'm not mad at people that want to catch fish. I just got a little bit wiser about my information of what I'm going to share out on river fishing. You'll see all the Smith Mountain Lake videos you want. If you want to go hit that brush pile again, by all means, go hit that. I don't care. I won't be back for a year. But um, for this stuff, that's pretty much how it works, man. For me, I have to have a system. System is clockwork, has to happen, has to go a certain way. I have to edit it real quick. I'll shorten my clips. I do all that. Um, in iMovie, I use the editors that they have in their software too. The Instagram editor, TikTok editor, I use those 
editors in there because they have a ton of great. You mentioned TikTok though. That's a, was that a, if you're talking about 2015 when you got onto YouTube and then you had the explosion in like 2019 COVID year of TikTok, were you an early adopter of TikTok or you were like, this is stupid. It's not going to work. I did not know or do anything about TikTok until 2022, 2021 or 2022. No, I had no clue. I had no idea you could make money on TikTok. I had no idea you could live stream on TikTok. I just saw people. I figured TikTok was for funny dance videos and I don't watch a lot of funny dance videos. So um, that's all I thought TikTok was for. I did not know there were millionaire live streamers on TikTok. I did not know there were TikTok shop and I didn't, None of that stuff. I know some of that's fairly new, but no, I did not know anything about TikTok. I only went live on TikTok one day by default. I've been doing it on Instagram and I saw a live button pop up. I got, I did have a lot of success on TikTok sharing two videos, but the crazy part is about my two viral videos, my first two viral videos, I say first two viral videos, I shared it at night at like 11, maybe like 2 a.m. or 11 p.m. I literally just took a YouTube video, long form, edited out like a 30 second clip that I thought was, I didn't even edit the video. I literally just took the, the, the piece of the video out, threw it on TikTok, put a hashtag on there about mistakes or messed up or something. And then I woke up in the morning and my wife was like, your video's got 500,000 views. And I was like, what video? She's like, on TikTok. And I'm like, TikTok? I don't even remember making a TikTok video. She's like, you you made a TikTok. I was like, last time I made a video, like two two days ago. I don't even remember making a video. She's like, now it's got 700,000. I was like, Jesus. What do you, she's like, now it's got 900. And we're literally standing on the porch talking. It just kept going. Like people, just, it just shot up. And I'm like, uh, she's like, now it's, now it's at 2.1 some mil. Like, and I, 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 it's the same YouTube video. I literally shared it on YouTube, but I just took a little, section of me dropping my rod that's how most people know and matter of fact it's a great place to share since ever some people know me for that video people think i left that bit that rod in the river that rod is still right here in my living room i got the rod back that i lost in the viral video i used the crankbait cranked this rod back up and i got it and the significance behind it is that my wife had given it to me for father's day i was supposed to be home of course you know how anglers are one last cast turns in an extra 45 minutes now i'm late and not only am I late, the late turned into even later because I lost the rod. Uh, so <laughs> that video, <laughs> I was 45 minutes behind turned into an hour and 30 because it took me 40 minutes to get the rod back out of the water. So that rod holds a very significant place in my heart. My, rod get, my wife gave it to me for Father's Day. I didn't want to lose it. I was willing to risk it all to get that rod back. But yeah, I don't know. I missed out on all that. I That is one thing about my whole social media journey that I have is that I wish I had picked up on the significance on TikTok when you're saying it did because there's yeah. um the people on tiktok the way they support you the way they support your content they'll buy your shirts they'll buy they'll support you all the way through the tiktok supporters they are huge 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 they're like some of the people i met on tiktok are i mean they're absolutely it's incredible some of them i met they came and met me like it's been it's been phenomenal man the the dealing with the um the tiktok deal so you were really smart though, because you did diversify your portfolio. A lot of guys I know that would just go into one, and, and it's really smart to make sure you get out there on multiple platforms. Especially like, you know, if people are following this, like the TikTok ban allegedly that may or may not happen, just got a lot of people terrified uh, in twenty twenty whatever it is. But yeah, really smart business sense on, on your part there. Um, speaking of business sense, just to kind of wrap this thing up, is your hat and your shirt? Like, how did that happen? Um, so my brand and how do I not have one here with me? That's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, I might, well, the power of editing, we can get you one. Look, so if you want to go yeah, grab it and show it off, you can. I'm going to see if I, I, um, guys, can y'all grab one of my hoodies? Son, grab your hoodie up there. Grab your hoodie right for that for me, please. Um, so basically I came up with the first design I came up with was me and my son. Um, he, he's a firm believer. I'm a firm believer in, um, uh, the never give up motto so that's kind of where I, I first dove into it and this is one of those this isn't my fishing one but this is just the motto uh, that we have a lot of people have um but we came up with the design we partnered with somebody to do the uh the design for us and all that and i wanted to get something for my kids as a as a, a dad a, a very very proud dad i have amazing kids and i'm just like i i just feel like this this literally has changed my life and several people's lives 
from a standpoint, whether it's uh, health related, fishing related, whatever it is, just never, never giving up um, on it, whether it be giving up on your dreams or just in a tournament, just don't quit early. Like just keep fishing the whole eight hours type of thing. Just if you look at it in the simplest form versus um, deeper meaning. But then I decided to go into making my own line, which was the uh, fish only eat Senko. So I have a uh, fish only eat Senko's uh, hat we're working on, hoodie, t-shirts, things like that. But that came from just, it's a, and I've actually never explained this to anyone, I don't think. Um, it's a, it's a philosophy that I have, um, based on just my experience in tournament fishing is that we all know what fish like to eat when they're eating certain things, yet we still want, you still spend 900, $600, $77 when you know that if you just tie on a worm, you can catch fish, right? You just tie on, if you're a frog fan, you just tie on a frog. Sometimes you you get in your own head and you mess your own self up. So it's, it's a line I created about fish only eat sinkos, just meaning that fish eat, they eat whatever you're going to throw. That like it, Sometimes you just overcomplicate it. So it's about adapting. That's why I created the line. It's about adapting to the conditions that day. So fish only eat sinkos. They only eat uh, orange and brown Cinco's until the water color changes. Then they don't eat that color anymore. Then you might want to find a green pumpkin purple. But it's really just about adapting. So that's why I created a fish only eat Cinco's, um, fish only eat chatterbaits, fish only eat things. I, whatever bait people come up with. I have a guy that wants me to do a snakehead one. Fish on, Snakeheads only eat frogs. I'm working on a snakehead line of it um, as well. Snakeheads only eat frogs type of thing. Um, and I'm trying to partner with bait makers to if uh, fish only eat a frog, but you have a specific frog, we put that on the shirt. So I'm trying to oh, break cool. out on the line. Uh, so you you know that you fish this type of bait. I want to put that exact bait on the thing. So I'm working on that as well, but I'm just, you know, it's everything's a process time and everything costs money. So I'm trying to, to, you know, pace myself when it comes to, I have so many ideas. I would just assume jump out and do, I have ideas. I've, I've messaged Bassmaster, Major League Fishing. I have ideas for the tournaments. I improve viewership people watching getting people involved in the sport things like that making it more fun because i hate to say it but we all know nobody can watch eight straight hours of fishing it's not if if i fish and i'm, I'm not gonna watch you for eight hours i'm gonna go grab my pole i'm gonna go fishing i'm not gonna watch you fish or watch the back of your head the side of your head the front of your head i don't care what part of your head i'm watching i, I don't care about any of that i'm not gonna sit there and watch you fish for eight hours i'm gonna go fishing at some point i and i told my buddies he's like what you watching the tournament I am, but I put it on the screen. I make the screen big. I cut my phone off. I let it play like a podcast and I go fishing. That's what I do. That's how I watch all the tournaments. I let it play like a podcast unless I hear them say something about top water. Then I open up my screen and because because <laughs> they zoom in, they zoom in on top water. I love the zoom. So if I know they're going to zoom and I get to see the bait walk, it's like mesmerizing. It's like a, uh, the little thing that they swing in your face. I'm just, so when they do that, then I want to tune in. But other than that, I don't want to watch, sit there and watch nobody um, uh, dangle a dangle a uh, minnow for uh, for. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that crap. So, um, anyways, but yes, that's why I created the line. It's really about adapting. Um, adapting today, I have on my uh, you know my sponsors and stuff. I got that on, but um, for the most part, I um, I, uh, I I like I like that idea. I I I like the um, idea of, of having something of my own that I create myself. So people ask me, why don't you have Bass and Fury shirts? Bass and Furious is a very specific thing. I tried to make something that's more universal that everybody, because everybody likes fishing, so I wanted to make something universal. I could make a bunch of Bass and Furious shirts, but I wanted to try to start doing um, something that I felt like gives me my best shot at hitting um, a wide array of uh, saltwater, freshwater, all anglers, basically. Dude, you are freaking awesome. Like that is so much to have on your plate and you have such a great like artistic mind. Um, I mean, I guess I, I, we've covered everything and <laughs> I feel like we could cover like six hours more, but I, I'd, I'd hate to do that to you right now. Okay. What um what do you have coming up? And, and please like give a shout out to your sponsors because I think you have a couple of new sponsors, correct, for this year? I do. Um, I, I, I made a few changes knowing that I was going to do the kayak fishing. I wanted to align things with that then I got the boat that kind of switched me there a little bit, but um, yes, I do. I've got um, fishing just one division of BFLs this year. I decided to cut back from two. I'm not fishing any Bassmaster Opens this year. I've as much as I enjoy the Opens as phenomenal as they are. It just 
I I got a 50% chance of not even being able to weigh in my fish with my record the way it's going so far. And that's that that's a lot of money to shell out to have every day two of my tournaments turn out not good and me to have no control over that. You know what I'm saying? If I spend my 500, I like to get the weigh in. I'd like to be there and I'd like to have a chance to do. So I'm going to chill on the Bassmaster Opens just for a little bit. Um, plus, they don't come anywhere near my town. If they came to the Potomac, I would throw my whole rule out the window and I'd jump right back in there. But they don't come to the Potomac. So, or James, or if they came to Kerr or Norman, I mean, something, but it's fine. So, no Bassmaster Opens, but I am doing Toyota Series on the Potomac BFLs. Um, as many kayak trails as I can get into. I'm working on something about that. I know me and you talked about it. I'm going to release that very soon, but I'm working on my own thing for the kayaks as well. Um, that's kind of what I got planned coming up for this year that it's 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 started off great and i make a lot of my decisions i may be like some people when i say this but i make a lot of my decisions about my fishing in season so i basically told myself if i'm doing the kayak trail and it's going great i'm going to prioritize the kayaks if i'm doing the bfls and the bfls going great i'm going to prioritize the bfls i'm going to if, if it's your year like i think was it crossland or something cross i think it might have been crossland somebody tyler trent one of these guys like that when you're on them and you're catching them, you've got to get on the water and keep on fishing. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing this year. I want to do that. As far as who I'm partnering with this year, I did um, still 13 Fishing. I've been with them now for four years. They were recently bought by Rapala, though. So Rapala now owns 13 Fishing. So now I'm a part of Rapala Pro Staff Team, 13 Fishing. That includes BMC, Terminator, Suffix Line, and I believe it's one more on there. Laura Jensen. Laura Jensen. I don't know if anybody knows Laura Jensen, but it's all they're all under one line now so Rapala owns all of them i believe so now that means um since i'm on 13 fishing i'm on the Rapala team i've i've had a chance to talk to some people at Rapala now i feel really good about um that deal and where we're headed i am a little bit you're always sad when you work with one and it's not the one anymore things are changing now there's always a transition process but um i i do i love working with the guys at 13 fishing the guys there um that I got to know and talk to, I felt really good about that, but it's different now. And I, I got to adapt. As I say, I got to adapt. I got to move on. I did this year. Also in working with though, I think I got one of the things here, um, evolve broad sleeves. I did uh, start working with evolve this year. I am, I complain about treble hooks in my rod sleeves. Every single time I go fishing, somebody gets chewed out because a crankbait, uh, hook ends up in my rod sleeve and I cannot stand it. I lose so much time fishing by getting the crankbait uh, hooks in my sleeve. These have the material where no crankbait hooks are getting through my my thing. I've tested it several times now. They don't get in there. I can just go up and make my cast. So of all I partner with this year, uh, Nest Realty, that's a real estate company local to Virginia. Um, if you are looking to buy a home, uh, Nest Realty, I partner with them. Um, I know one of the agents there, her name's Robin. She's phenomenal. She actually sold me my house that I live in right now. Um, but Nest Realty, who's our partner with, and they've actually came in clutch for me this year. So huge shouts out to Nest Realty, uh, Sarah and Robin and Nest Realty. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, that's a big one that I'm working with this year. And then I could have sworn there might've been, uh, one more, but it's unlikely. I I've had the weirdest year with sponsorships this year. I, I, I have not shared this anywhere with anyone. I had the weirdest year with sponsorships this year. I've, I've dealt with some things that I don't feel like any person should deal with when it comes to working with companies. And it's unfortunate. I'm choosing to take the road of, I understand things happen, even though nothing was actually explained to me. I, I'm taking the road of uh, life happens and I need to move through with my life and I need to adjust and make things that happen. That I need to make happen. But it's been a very interesting year for me for a sponsor. So I'm very thankful for the ones that I just mentioned to you. Very, very thankful. Generically, do you think the relationship be between corporate and content creators is better worse or the same since you started i had it a lot better when there wasn't as many of us put it that way now i think everybody's kind of got on to what you what it takes or what they're looking for now and particularly the return on investment there they have ways to track and monitor um if you are actually worth anything to them if that makes sense right so they um they have ways to do that now so it, it's different. It's different now. They can see if you post and there's no sales. Well, yeah, probably not going to write that guy a check anymore. We were writing checks before because he said he was talking to everybody. Now we know you're not talking to anybody or at least no one's listening when you talk. So they're changing how they approach that. I've had 
and the majority of my deals, a lot of people think uh, some of the stuff I got is from fishing. It is from fishing, but I didn't want fishing to dictate whether you work with me or not. So basically, if I never win another tournament, I still want to. I still want companies. I still want to be marketable in a sense to where companies can work with me. I don't want it to rely on whether or not I've got a top five or top three. I want you to work with me to work with me because you understand that I'm going to create some content. I'm going to put some time into creating content. And I, I wanted to build my people that rock with me. You say followers, but I, you know, some, like some of them, some of them may talk to more than people I know. Um, I, I want, I, I want them to know that there's people that rock with me and that they will listen. If I do say something because they know that I'm not giving them junk, I'm giving them something that they see me fishing they see me testing like I've been talking about all, all week. I kept it low key for a minute, but the cleanup crawl from Crush City, the Rapala, I just got I just got on this company. So I'm learning all the baits and all the stuff like that. I throw it, but I'm going to post something that shows it, it that I'm using it. I use it on a regular basis. It did good for me on the Potomac. It did good for me on the other pond I fished the other day. It did good for me here. Like, so the people know that if I talk about something, I'm not trying to do that. So. Um, that's kind of how I wanted to market myself to people. So a lot of the stuff I have is as an influencer or content creator, the fishing side is a bonus side. When I come back with a trophy, okay, now you're talking about stuff and you're fishing. I didn't personally think there was any validity to what I was saying as an angler without something to show that I can catch fish. There's so many people that talk about, you need to throw this bait. Me personally, I got to see you doing something before I'm going to listen to you talking about a bait. You can tell me all you want. If I ain't seen you catch nothing on it and you, you don't got no numbers, I ain't seen you fishing no tournaments that I know about, I'm not listening to your bait talk. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go watch Randy Blocky rant instead. I'm not listening to your junk. I need to know it. So for me, um, being able to create content and and actually, I guess, influence. I guess I'm a micro-influencer, I guess, in a sense, influence people um, to, to do. Because I have a lot of people. I had to t tell myself this. I know we're wrapping up. I had to tell myself this. Not everybody is a professional bass angler. Some people just want to learn. They just want ideas. They just want tips and tricks. I saw you shared one. Matter of fact, you give me kudos. I saw you shared one. Guys, I'm telling you, fishing the DMV here, the guy can catch fish. I'm telling you, you can catch fish. I, I seen him moving in the board. I know he can catch fish. He, then you released a video about your tips. And, I did. Yeah. So I'm like, yes. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. When I see and I know, of course, I, when the notification popped up, I have my notifications on for your podcast for sure. Cause I need to know when it's coming on. See if you're talking about Smith Mountain Lake or Kurt. I saw the uh, Billy Coles episode on Smith Mountain Lake. Everybody needs to know what Billy Coles is doing. He was giving swim bait mods and tips and tricks, right? So um, I'm paying attention to that, man. And it's it's having that influence and content creation, that kind of thing. It, it really um, that that is that's part of why I get what I get and where some of the companies that have reached out to me or that I've reached out to, I can say that I have sixty thousand followers across multiple platforms and i have it listed out and this is on this and this is on this and you mentioned running it and organize it i actually run six different instagrams and i run three different tiktoks and i have four different youtubes um mm. i have four different twitters or x i should say um so i've run all of those one's a photography one one's a soccer one one's my music one i'm a musician that's my main job as a musician so I have a whole music page where I use that to connect with artists and promote my music and uh, show videos of me playing my piano. That's I didn't show you that side of my office. This is the other side of my office is my music production and studio work, things like that. So that's another side. That, that's uh, you you can't just low key say I'm a musician <laughs> full time and then we're going to say we're done here. Am, OK, I'm that's a, a whole. Musician. That's my that's what I do. I play keyboard. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. I've been playing. So I play for artists, billboard recording artists, touring up and down. I cut back a lot of stuff that I do because, again, I got the kids and family. I'm not trying to travel. I don't want to be in Tennessee on a Tuesday. I want to be in Virginia at soccer. Did you used to have to be at Tennessee on a Tuesday? Like, how much would you travel for keyboard? We we travel Delaware, uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. Dude, holy Virginia. shit, that's cool. Yeah, like that's that, I mean, I right now my main thing that I do is I play music in. Uh, church and that's been my that's a solid thing that i've been doing now for like 25 years is playing that but i do play for matter of fact y'all gonna see me playing for another artist here very soon i just talked to him like two days ago so i should be playing for him very soon the fairgrounds we do a lot of shows at the fairgrounds up here with another guy my tournament partner 
we're in a band together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's a whole nother world of, 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 of me. But that's where uh, that's I mean, that and I, that's that. So that that's kind of when you mentioned about me and what I do, that the music side of it is where I learned to know your worth and your value. Like, I don't answer the phone. If you're in, and if anyone knows me, they know this. I don't answer the phone if you want me to do two, two hour sets, and you want to pay me fifty dollars and give me some wings. Don't call me. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not doing no wings gigs. Don't give me Miller Genuine and don't offer me that. Don't offer me none of that. Two hundred dollars. I need make it worth my while, and then we're gonna play because I've done. You know that's why I say I understand my work. So when I meet with these companies, when I talk to people. I have different conversations and my thought process is different because like I said, I'm trying to diversify. I want to make sure I need you to know that I can play country music. I can play R and B music. I can play hip hop. I can play rap. I can play. I love playing country music. I'm a Brett young. In case you didn't know, that's one of my favorite songs. I love playing these types. I, I play all kinds of stuff, any song, whatever you pick. That's that. That's part of why I, I like to just do, I, I'm in everything, man. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm in, I'm in everything, <laughs> dude. No, I, I love this. My God, like the, I love these little tangents you go down because I would not have put that on my bingo part as professional musician that 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 on the side he fishes bass tournaments and wins. That's for, that's so cool. <laughs> oh man, when you say it like that, that does sound pretty. Um, yeah, but that's me. Yes, that's that's 25 years of uh, music is what I what I've been doing. I just got into fishing, like I said, maybe eight or eight or nine, and I only did it. Because I, um, basketball kind of slowed down, your, your knees, you know, things like that. I wanted something that I could get into. And Rick Klun, this, I, I commented on Rick Klun's thing. I told him, you never know who you're influencing. You never know who's paying attention to what you're doing. I commented to Rick Klun. I saw Rick Klun fishing. I think he might have been 67 or something at the time. If he's not even 67 yet, I apologize, Rick Klun. I think he's like 70-something, though. But he was like 67. He's still putting his boat in the water. He's still competing at a high level with all these guys. This was like, you know, seven, eight years ago. I saw it and I said, do I want to do that? I can't play basketball when I'm 63. I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to watch them. I'm going to watch LeBron's kid play. That's all I'm going to do. Like, I'm not going to be trying to do, but I think I can bass fish. I think I can climb in a boat. I think I can pitch out a rod. I think I can, you know, do the mental toughness thing and, and grind for the days. So that's when I decided to make a decision to try to get into bass fishing to try to do like Rick Lund doing something I can do for a long period of time. That's literally what got me to thinking I could do it. And since then I've been here, here we are. We're, we're still going right now. We're, we're doing our own thing. You know what I mean? Dude. L- last question is why the keyboard and not the saxophone, drums, guitar. It's very unique. How did you get into the keyboard? Um, at the time it was, ne- it was actually necessity. So my dad plays bass. My mom sings, my sister sings. Um, so at the time for the, it was a, I think it was like, it was like a choir we were playing for. We needed a keyboard player. So my dad used his bass knowledge of pushing one finger. Uh, he's like, son, you know, hit the keyboard right here. Do this. And then he showed me how to hit three notes. And at the time, it was uh, that's the need that we needed at the time for musician wise to stick with it was um, had to do with I, 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 lo- I love playing the piano. I love creating. I love melodies. I love just doing that kind of thing. But um Let's just say, and all my musician buddies are going to hate me for this. Um, when it comes to playing the type of music that I play, most of the time, the keyboard player is the one that's running the show. A lot of the times, he's the music director, and he's the one that they look out for the best when it comes to the end of the day, and they spread the wealth. The sax player, the style, the way I'm playing, the sax player, then they, they sometimes they may they may give him a couple of uh, a couple of uh, packs of Pokemon cards. Like they don't really look out for that guy at the end of the show. I'm, I don't know what that is. Um, a lot of times they consider the keyboard player to be the lead instrument at that time. So for my best bang for my buck um, to stick with was that I played the drums. I, I'm on an album playing the drums. I played the drums. Uh, what, what album? Guess, it's a group called the Silver Brothers. It's a family group. Um, they put me on, put me on there as drums. Uh, my cousin plays the keyboard too. So he played the keys on that. They put me on as drums. It's still available. I'm pretty sure you can download it, but um, I create my I create my own music. I just I like doing my own thing. I like just being in charge of uh, of the melody, coming up with the ideas in my head, the that type of thing. I, I'm usually the the guy that does that. And 
I, so, I mean, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of work because you do have to learn every song. Somebody doesn't learn their part. I got to know the part, that type of thing. But um, it's that that That's was so it. cool. OK, last That's last thing. Who's more of a drama queen? The drummer, singer, lead guitar. Who's more of a drama queen? Man, drummer, hands down. Every drummer <laughs> has been absolutely a wild man. We had a drummer at one of my shows, my buddy, my be- one of my good friends. He at the end of the show, he always hit a block, block. Then he rides on the cymbal, ride, ride, ride. Then he's done, you know, stand up and chuck all of his sticks into the crowd. And I'm like, one, you're going to get sued. And our shows are going to be over when you knock somebody upside the head with these jokes. But always, blah, blah, ticka, 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 ticka. Just stand up and just go. And I'm like, man, you've got to be kidding me, man. But every show, he was the one that came in with the big, jacket and he's i mean by, i say jacket like a big old big old coat that was lavish and he gets there when he wants to get there good dude he's he's my boy man it's absolutely great but he's always all every drummer i get they always got something something going on that's why i'm so glad that the guys i play with now they just they they lock in we go to work we have a good time just like my buddy did he locked in he went to work but he, he had he had flair you know he had a little that was him that was him being him i'm not mad at that i was a quiet keyboard player i just played the notes and i I go home. That's that's it. I didn't have any of the flair. He brought the party, so they, people love it. They they love they loved it. So it was great. Ty, <laughs> oh my God! If, if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or watching YouTube, please go follow him. I'm going to put a link to all of his albums and also his music too, so you can check that as well. Everything will be linked in the episode description. Um, Appreciate it. Thanks. I, I, dude, I got nothing else, man. You, you're awesome. Uh, as always, guys, please give him a follow. Like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out in the algorithm. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, if it wasn't for my Patreon supporters, this channel wouldn't exist. Also, as we get closer to our goal, we do have permission from Virginia and Maryland to start a nonprofit to do supplemental stock. So once we hit our goal, we can actually make that a reality. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia, and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits Online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.